So this is unit three, higher chemistry, and we're gonna be looking at most of the topics related to enthalpy. So some of this will be a revision of national five topics and other things will be new or extended based on what you did last year. So the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what is enthalpy? Well, enthalpy is one of the two components that determines the overall energy change for a reaction. And at national five and at higher, Enthalpy is the only one that you need to worry about. If you do advance higher, you'll learn about a thing called entropy as well. Now, what enthalpy deals with is the energy difference between all of the bonds that exist in the reactants compared to the energy in all of the bonds in the products. Enthalpy has the symbol H and it's measured in kilojoules per mole. And because whenever you're looking at a reaction, you're looking at how enthalpy has changed. So it's more likely you'll see it as a delta, that symbol that looks like a triangle, delta H or change in enthalpy. Now these diagrams shouldn't be particularly new to you. And um, these are the diagrams that represent exo and endothermic reactions. So on the diagrams, um, it is potential energy, and that's just the energy stored in the bonds of the chemical. And we have a line representing the reactants, the line labeled R, and a line labeled P for products. And then we have the curve which goes between them, and the curve always goes up into a hill and then back down to the products. The highest point on that curve is the activated complex. So what we talked about whenever we uh, looked at catalysts. Catalysts create an activated complex, a pathway uh, through which the reaction happens. And the energy difference between your reactants and the activated complex is your activation energy. So for some reactions, the activation energy is quite small and for some, um, the activation energy is quite large. If we look at the uh, diagram on the left specifically, we can see that comparatively, the products have less energy than the reactants. And whenever we want to calculate our difference in enthalpy, it's the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. And so when the products have less energy than the reactants, it means that the difference in enthalpy, your delta H, is going to be negative. And that means that energy is given out to the surroundings because it's no longer inside the chemicals you have. It has to have been given out. Now, when we look at the diagram on the right hand side, we have the products with higher energy than the reactants. And so whenever we do our calculation and subtract the energy um, of the reactants away from the products, we'll have a positive value. And that means that it's an endothermic reaction. It means that some of the energy that you needed to put into the system at the start um, has been held and is now stored as bonds within the products. So the difference between reactants and product energy is what um, determines whether or not a reaction is endothermic, takes in energy, or exothermic, gives out energy. When it comes to calculating enthalpy changes from those potential energy diagrams, there are different things that you might be asked to do. You can be asked about the forwards reactions. So the forward reaction is reactants going into products. And in this case, the enthalpy change is the energy of your products minus the energy of your reactants. And the activation energy is the energy of the activated complex, the highest point on the potential energy diagram, minus the energy of the reactants. Now, if you are dealing with a system that is reversible, you can also be asked about the reverse reaction. And for the reverse reaction, all you do is you change reactants and products around. So for the, the enthalpy change, it's this time for the reverse reaction, it's going to be the enthalpy of your reactants minus the enthalpy of your products. And for your activated complex, uh, your activation energy, sorry, it's going to be your activated complex minus the energy of the products. 
And what you'll find is that um, delta H for the forwards reaction is just going to be the opposite sign as the reverse reaction. But the activation energy for each process can be quite different from one another. So the enthalpy changes, one will just be the same number with a positive sign, one will be the same number with a negative sign, but the activation energy for both processes will be significantly different numbers. So here are some worked examples. So this is a type of diagram you might be given. It's got numbers plotted on the sides, uh, representing your reactants and products, and then the activated complex. And here are two questions that you could be asked. What is the enthalpy change for the forward reaction? And what is the activation energy for the reverse reaction? For the forward reaction, our enthalpy change is reactants uh, taken away from products, so products minus reactants. So that's going to be 75 minus 150, which gives us minus 75, which means it's an exothermic reaction. And that's what we expect because the products have lower energy than the reactants. Now carefully, when we read the second question, it's asking us about the reverse reaction and it's asking us about activation energy. So for this one, it's going to be the energy of the activated complex minus the products. So it's going to be 240 minus 75, which is 165 kilojoules per mole. Activation energy is always positive. So it's going to be positive 165 kilojoules per mole. A second example, and this is the harder type of question, is when they give you the um, graph and then they tell you something's changed and ask you a question about it. So this is a particularly difficult example. So a catalyst was added to the reaction shown on the left. The activation energy of the reverse reaction was lowered to 220. So our new activation energy with a catalyst is 220. And then it's asking you what the new activation energy for the forward reaction would be now that there's a catalyst. So how we need to approach this question is we need to work out what the new energy of the activated complex is and then use that to work out the activation energy for the forward reaction. So for the reverse reaction, we know that the new activation energy is 220. We know that the activated complex, um, how we work that out is products plus activation energy. And that's just rearranging the equation, activation energy equals activated complex minus products. So when we do that, it's going to be 50 for our products plus 220 for our activation energy, which means that the activated complex is now at 270 rather than um, 300. Now we need to work out what the activation energy for the forwards reaction is. For the forwards reaction, um, activation energy is activated complex minus reactants. So that's going to be 270 is the activated complex now minus 120 for the reactants, which gives us 150 kilojoules per mole. Or if you want to be very precise, positive 150 kilojoules per mole. 